In the last lecture, I showed you how to manually configure an NFS traditional data store in ONTAP storage for your ESXi hosts. When I say manually, I mean not using NetApp VSC virtual storage console. In this lecture, it's going to be another lab demo. Rather than being an NFS data store, I'll show you how to configure an iSCSI data store manually at this time. Later in this section, you'll see how to configure all the data stores using VSC. Looking at the lab topology again here, what I'm going to do here is very similar to what I did for the NFS data store. It's the same lab topology. So we've got our two ESXi hosts. They've both got the same networking configuration where they have got two adapters which are connected to the management network, two adapters which are connected to the virtual machines network, and then we've got our adapters VMNIC2 and VMNIC3 that are connected to the storage network. I had my NFS traffic already going over there, and I'm also going to configure the iSCSI traffic to be going over that storage network as well. NFS was using the IP subnet 172.23.11.0 slash 24. iSCSI is going to be using 172.23.12.0 slash 24. I've already configured all of the network settings. So I've already got my distributed virtual switch set up with the two uplinks going to the storage network. And I've configured my SAN Fabric A and Fabric B port groups. And I've configured VM kernel ports on both of my hosts, which are connected to each of the uplinks. On my ESXi1 host, it's configured with the IP address 172.23.12.51 on the first uplink and 172.23.12.151 on the second uplink. And ESXi2 is 172.23.12.52 on the first uplink, and 172.23.12.152 on the second uplink. I've got my ONTAP node down at the bottom here. It's also connected to the storage network with a couple of uplinks. The first uplink has been configured with a logical interface with IP address 172.23.12.21 and the second one is using 172.23.12.22. So I'm using the same IP subnet on both the source side on my ESXi host and on the destination side on my ONTAP cluster as is the best practice. So let's verify that now. So I'll go into System Manager here. If I go to storage and SVMs, you can see that I've already got my SVM added, which I've named SAN. I don't have anything configured on there yet apart from the networking settings. So if I go to network and then network interfaces, you can see I've got my two iSCSI lifts, 172.23.12.21 on the first uplink and 172.23.12.22 on the second uplink. So that's ready for me to configure the LUN over on the ONTAP side. Looking in vSphere, if I go to the networking tab here, you can see I've got my storage virtual distributed switch already configured, and I've got a SAN A port group and a SAN B port group on there. If I go back to the switch level here, and I go to configure and topology, you can see there are the two port groups. And if I expand my VM kernel ports out, you can see there's the IP address on my first host and my second host on the SAN A uplink. And then there's the IP address on my first and second host on the SAN B uplink. And you can see the uplinks over here on the right as well. Okay, so networking is already being configured. If you want a refresher on how to do that, it was covered earlier in this section. Okay. So let's actually go and get the data store set up now for my ESXi host. So I'm going to add that on the ONTAP side. Before I do that, when I add the LUN, I'm also going to be configuring the initiator group where I specify which hosts are allowed to connect into the storage. So I need to get the IQNs of my ESXi hosts first. So I'm going to do that in vSphere. I'll go to the hosts and clusters page here. I will click on my first host and I'd already added my iSCSI software initiator. Again, that was covered earlier in this section. So I'll click on that 
And then if I go to the properties tab, actually just before I go to properties, you can see that the iSCSI software adapter has already been added. We did that earlier in the section. And looking at the network port binding, it's bound to both the SAN A and the SAN B uplinks. Okay, to get the IQN, which I need for the iGroup, I click on the properties tab here, and there I can see is the iSCSI name. So I'm going to just highlight that, and I'm going to hit Control c to copy it, and I'm going to open up Notepad, and then I'm going to paste this into Notepad. If I can get my laptop to work here, so let's try typing in Notepad again. Okay, and paste in the first IQN, and then I'll go to my second ESXi host, and select the iSCSI software adapter again, and on the Properties tab, I'm going to copy the IQN of that one as well. I also just click on the network port binding, and there I can see that my second host is also got its iSCSI software adapter associated with both of those uplinks to the storage network. Okay, I'll go back to Notepad and paste in that second IQN there. Okay, so I've got the IQNs, so I'm ready to configure my LUN over in the ONTAP storage now. So I'll go to System Manager, and then storage and go to LUNs and it's on my SAN SVM I'm going to create a LUN here that opens up the create LUN wizard I'll click on next for my LUN name let's name this SAN LUN 1 and this is going to be my iSCSI data store which is going to be shared by both of my hosts so both of my ESXi hosts are going to be able to keep their virtual machine files in here the type is going to be for VMware clients so I select VMware in this lab environment I'll make it just a small size of three gigabytes and let's disable the space reserve to make that thin provisioned and I'll click on next and then I'm going to create a volume for the LUN to go in. I'll choose my aggregate. I've only got one aggregate here on this cluster. Say OK. And then for the volume name, let's name, let's just take the default name. So san lun one underscore vol is fine. I'll click on next. And then I need to configure my initiator group now to say which initiators, which clients are going to be able to connect in and use this one. So I'll click on add initiator group and I'll give it a name of ESXi hosts. The operating system is VMware. They are going to be connecting in using iSCSI. That all looks good. And I'll click on the initiators tab and I'll go back to Notepad and copy the IQN of my first ESXi host. Come back to the wizard and paste that in. And then put in a comma. And then copy the IQN of the second host. And paste that in here as well. And then click on create. I can see that it is successfully created. I click on OK. And then important, don't forget to tick the checkbox to actually map this to the LUN as well. If you don't tick the checkbox, then it's not going to work. Okay, that looks good. I can then click on Next. I don't need to configure any storage QoS here for this lab demo. I click Next and then Next again. And that's going to create the LUN and the volume and also do the iGroup mapping for me. So I can click on Finish here. And I can see that there is my LUN has been created. If I click on Initiator Groups, I see I've got my ESXi hosts. And I can see that they've both been added correctly there as well. I can also click on the Volumes page. And I can see there is the volume that the LUN is in. Okay, so that's everything configured on the ONTAP side. I'll go back onto vSphere now and connect into that LUN from the clients. I'm going to select my first ESXi host in here and then click on my iSCSI software adapter and I am going to click on dynamic discovery and I'm going to click the add button and I'm going to add in the IP address of my first logical interface on ONTAP that was configured for the iSCSI SVM. And that was IP address 172.23.12.21. 
the other lift was dot 22. I only need to add one here because it's going to automatically discover the other one. And then click on OK. And I can see in recent tasks that it is going through the discovery. I need to also do a rescan. So I click on rescan adapter. And then I can now click on static discovery and I can see that it has discovered both of my IP addresses over on the ONTAP storage. There is 172.23.12.21 and 12.22 as well. And I can see there is the IQN of my ONTAP storage. If I want to just verify that, I can quickly go back into ONTAP and under storage and SVMs, I can select the SAN SVM, go to the SVM settings, click on the iSCSI page, and there is the IQN of my ONTAP system, and that ties up with what I've got over here in vSphere. Okay, so it should be discovered now, and if I now click over on to the Devices tab, I can see there is my LUN. So the SXI client has discovered the LUN there. I can see it's on NetApp storage and it is the three gigabyte LUN that I created earlier. So that all looks good. I can also click on paths and I should see that multipathing is working. And if I just scroll down here, you're gonna see that it's got four paths because I have got my two VM kernel ports on the ESXi host. There's two lift addresses on the ONTAP storage. So it's going to show me four paths here because the, I've got two source addresses and two destination addresses, and it's going to add those all together to give me my four paths. Okay, um, other things to show you in here. If I go on properties, if I wanted to configure CHAP authentication, you remember when we did the SAN section earlier, I showed you how to configure CHAP authentication if you wanted to have enhanced security. I showed you how to do that for a Windows client. If you want to do it for an ESXi client, if we come down a bit here, you can see on the properties tab, we've got authentication and I can click on edit. And in there, I can choose unidirectional and bidirectional CHAP. So the way that you set it up for ESXi is exactly the same way as you do it for Microsoft Windows clients. So if you want a refresher on how to do that, have a look back at that lecture in the SAN section again. I just wanted to show you where you configure it in here. Other things to show you are, if I click on storage devices and then click on NetApp in here and under the properties, I can see that the multipathing by default, it's going to use round robin for the load balancing. I can also check the connections as well in my ONTAP storage. So in here, if I do a vServer, iSCSI connections show, I can see that I have got my incoming connections there from 172.23.12.51 and .151, those are the addresses on my ESXi1 client. So right now I've got my first ESXi host connected in. Let's get my second one connected in as well. So I will click on the second host here. Don't worry about the warning there, it's just because I'm running this in a lab with a limited amount of memory. So it might throw up some warnings, it's not a problem. I go to storage adapters and I'm going to do the same thing on here. So I select my iSCSI software adapter, go to dynamic discovery, click on add, add in the IP address of the first lift on the ONTAP system, which is 172.23.12.21 and click on OK. And then click on rescan adapter. And when that's completed, I can now click on static discovery. And again, I can see that it's discovered both IP addresses on the ONTAP system. If I then click on devices, I can see that it has also discovered the LUN. So right now, I've got both of my ESXi hosts connected in and they've discovered the LUN. But if I go back on to the command line again and on tap and hit the up arrow, I can see that I've now got my second host is connected in as well. So it's connected in, 
But if I go back into vSphere and I go onto the storage page, I can see I don't have a data store set up yet. So as well as connecting to the LAN, I also need to set it up as a data store in vSphere. So for that, I go to the storage tab and then I'm going to click on my folder up at the top here and then click on actions and storage and I'm going to create a new data store. And this is going to be formatted with VMFS because I'm using SAN now. So I click on next. The data store name, I'll give it the same name as what I configured the LUN, which was SAN LUN 1. And then I'm going to select a host which is able to see the LUN. So I click on the drop down and I've connected both of them so I can select either one here and then click on next. And it's showing the LUN up in here. So that all looks good. And select that LUN and then click next. And I'm going to use the latest version, VMFS version 6, and click Next. And then by default, it's going to use the entire size of the LUN for the data store. I'm happy with that. I will click on Next. And I can see my summary page, and I can click on Finish in here. And then that is going to create my VMFS data store. Okay, that's done. And I can now, it's showing, see it's showing up here in my data stores. I can click on it. And then if I click on hosts, I can see that both my hosts have got that data store available to them. So that all looks good. Well, it's just as a final verification check that I can have a virtual machine deployed in that data store. So I'm going to go back over to hosts and clusters and that YVM1 virtual machine that I deployed in the last lecture, I'm going to right click on that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to storage vMotion it over to the iSCSI data store. So right click and choose migrate. In here, if I go change compute resource only, that will do a vMotion. So it will move it from one ESXi host to another. I want to move it the files from one data store to another. So I'm going to change the storage only and then click on next. And then I do want it to be thin provisioned. That's what it was already. And it's currently in NASVOL 1. I want to move it over to SAN LUN 1. So I select that and click on Next. And then click on Finish. And then this will just take a few seconds to move the files over. And when that's done, if I have a look in the Data Stores tab on YVM1, it was on NAS before. Now it is on SAN LUN 1. And if I go back to the storage tab, click on SANLUN1 and then click on files, I can see there is the virtual machine there and the files have now been moved over. Okay, so that was it. That's how you manually configure an iSCSI traditional data store. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. Before you go, I'm excited to let you know about my new ONTAP9 storage complete course. It's available this week for special discount launch pricing. But the cart closes this Friday, the 18th October. I'll put a link at the top of the description below where you can find out all the details.